The following was written by Ralph Linton. There can be no question about the average American's Americanism or his desire to preserve this precarious heritage at all costs. Nevertheless, some insidious foreign ideas have already wormed their way into this civilization without his realizing what was going on. This dawn finds the unsuspecting patriot garbed in pajamas, a garment of Indian origin, and lying in a bed built on a pattern that originated in either Persia or Asia Minor. He is muffled to the ears in un-American materials. Cotton, first domesticated in India. Linen, domesticated in the Near East. Wool, from an animal native to Asia Minor, or silk whose uses were first discovered by the Chinese. All these substances have been transformed into clothes by methods invented in southwestern Asia. If the weather is cold enough, he may even be sleeping under an eiderdown quilt invented in Scandinavia. On awakening he glances at the clock, a medieval European invention, uses one potent Latin word in abbreviated form, rises in haste, and goes to the bathroom. If he stops to think about it, he must feel himself in the presence of a great American institution, he will have heard stories of both the quality and frequency of foreign plumbing and will know that in no other country does the average man perform his ablutions in the midst of such splendor. But the insidious foreign influence pursues him even here. Glass was invented by the ancient Egyptians, the use of glazed tiles for floors and walls in the Near East, porcelain in China, and the art of enameling on metal by Mediterranean artisans of the Bronze Age. Even his bathtub and toilet are but slightly modified copies of Roman originals. The only purely American contribution to the ensemble is the steam radiator. In his bathroom the American washes with soap invented by the ancient Gauls. Next, he cleans his teeth, a subversive European practice that did not invade America until the latter part of the 18th century. He then shaves, a masochistic rite first developed by the heathen priests of ancient Egypt and Sumer. The process is made less of a penance by the fact that his razor is of steel, an iron carbon alloy discovered in either India or Turkestan. Lastly, he dries himself with a Turkish towel. Returning to the bedroom, the unconscious victim of un-American practices removes his clothes from a chair, invented in the Near East, and proceeds to dress. He puts on close-fitting tailored garments whose form derives from the skin clothing of the ancient nomads of the Asiatic Tepes and fastens them with buttons whose prototypes appeared in Europe at the close of the Stone Age. This costume is appropriate enough for outdoor exercise in cold climate, but is quite unsuited to American summers, steam-heated houses, and Pullmans. Nevertheless, Foreign ideas and habits hold the unfortunate man in thrall even when common sense tells him that the authentically American costume of g-string and moccasins would be far more comfortable. He puts on his feet stiff coverings made from hide prepared by a process invented in ancient Egypt and cut to a pattern which can be traced back to ancient Greece, and makes sure they are properly polished, also a Greek idea. Lastly he ties around his neck a strip of bright-colored cloth which is a vestigial survival of the should shawls worn by the 17th century Croats. He gives himself a final appraisal in the mirror, an old Mediterranean invention, and goes downstairs to breakfast. Here a whole new series of foreign things confronts him. His food and drink are placed before him in pottery vessels, the popular name of which China is sufficient evidence of their origin. His fork is a medieval Italian invention and his spoon a copy of a Roman original. He will usually begin the meal with coffee, an Abyssinian plant first discovered by the Arabs. The American is quite likely to need to dispel the morning after effects of overindulgence in fermented drinks, invented in the Near East, or distilled ones, invented by the alchemists of medieval Europe. Whereas the Arabs took their coffee straight, he will probably sweeten it with sugar, discovered in India, and dilute it with cream. Both the domestication of cattle and the technique of milking having originated in Asia Minor. If our patriot is old-fashioned enough to adhere to the so-called American breakfast, his coffee will be accompanied by an orange, domesticated in the Mediterranean region, a cantaloupe domesticated in Persia, or grapes, domesticated in Asia Minor. He will follow this with a bowl of cereal made from grain domesticated in the Near East and prepared by methods also invented there. From this he will go on to waffles, a Scandinavian invention, with plenty of butter, 
originally a Near East cosmetic. As a side dish he may have the egg of a bird domesticated in southeastern Asia or strips of the flesh of an animal domesticated in the same region, which have been salted and smoked by a process invented in northern Europe. Breakfast over, he places upon his head a molded piece of felt, invented by the nomads of eastern Asia, if it look like rain, puts on outer shoes of rubber, discovered by the ancient Mexicans, and takes an umbrella, invented in India. He then sprints for his train the train, not the sprinting, being an English invention. At the station he pauses for a moment to buy a newspaper, paying for it with coins invented in ancient Lydia. Once on board he settles back to inhale the fumes of a cigarette invented in Mexico, or a cigar invented in Brazil. Meanwhile, he reads the news of the day, imprinted in characters invented in China. As he scans the latest editorial pointing out the dire results of our institutions accepting foreign ideas, he will not fail to thank a Hebrew god in an Indo-European language that he is 100% decimal system invented by the Greeks, American, from Americus Vespucci, Italian geographer.